Top field dragsters make over 10,000 horsepower. They can reach 300 miles an hour in three seconds, and they use about 20 gallons of fuel per mile. Yes, that's gallons per mile, not miles per gallon. In this video, we're gonna break down the physics behind top field dragsters, and we're gonna see how they accelerate faster than any car in the entire world. So before we hop into dragster numbers and really break down the full launch, we're gonna look at a really, really fast street car, the Dodge Demon. The Dodge Demon is the highest trim that Dodge offers in the Challenger, and it's basically a street legal drag car. From the factory, they offer drag radials that are extremely wide at 315 millimeters. The car makes 1,044 newton meters of torque using 100 octane fuel, and this car will actually raise the front axle off the ground under perfect launch conditions. I have the specs on the screen here. You can see the tires, the torque, the final drive ratio, which is 3.09, and the gear ratio of the first gear. So this is an eight speed gearbox, but the first gear ratio is 4.71. With all that information, we can calculate the torque that is actually applied to those rear wheels. So we take our engine torque, 1,044 Newton meters, multiplied by our final drive ratio, 3.09, multiplied by our first gear ratio, 4.71, and we can see that about 15,000 newton meters of torque are being applied to those rear wheels when the car is in first gear. So now that we know the torque that's being applied to the wheels, we can actually calculate the force that's gonna be exerted onto the ground. So with the simple physics equation, torque is equal to force times lever arm. We can take the radius of the tire, which in this case is the lever arm, and we take our wheel torque, 15,000 newton meters, divide it by the radius of the tire, 0.3543 meters, and we see that almost 43,000 newtons of force is being applied to the ground. And if you use the really simple equation, force is equal to mass times acceleration, you could calculate the max theoretical acceleration with this wheel force, and it comes out to about 21 meters per second squared, or 2.14 Gs of theoretical peak acceleration. But we forgot about something and that's drivetrain loss. And so we're gonna estimate roughly a 15% drivetrain loss or 85% drivetrain efficiency. So if you multiply that by our peak theoretical acceleration number, you get about 1.8 Gs. And that's actually right on par with what Dodge is claiming for the peak acceleration of the Demon right at launch. Also keep in mind that this happens only for a split second at launch. This is the first gear at peak torque, assuming that traction is perfect. That 1.8 Gs is gonna go down dramatically, especially once the car hits second gear, third gear, etc., and the forces start acting on the car like air resistance and rolling resistance. Cool, so we just broke down the physics and forces involved in a really hard streetcar launch. Now we're gonna look at a top field dragster launch and we're gonna see how crazy it gets. So to start, top field dragsters have incredibly unique tires. You can see right there the dimensions. They're 36 inches in diameter, 17.5 inches in width, and they support a rim size of 16 inches. Engine torque in the Dragster is around 10,000 Newton meters, although it's never been directly measured. Dragsters do not have a gearbox, so they're single speed with a final drive ratio of 3.2. So just like we did for the Demon, let's calculate the peak forces right at launch. For wheel torque, we simply multiply our motor torque 10,000 newton meters by our final drive ratio, 3.2, and we get 32,000 newton meters of wheel torque. This is only about double what the Demon is, but keep in mind, this wheel torque is sustained for the entire duration of the quarter mile, whereas that Demon is only experiencing that much wheel torque in the first gear, which only goes to 30 miles an hour. To calculate wheel force, we take our wheel torque and divide by our tire radius, in this case, the dragster has larger tires, so we see 68,000, almost 69,000 newtons of force being applied to the ground. Since we know the force being applied to the ground, we can calculate peak theoretical acceleration. Since top field dragsters only weigh about 2,200 pounds, that's about half of a Dodge Demon, the same wheel force would produce twice the acceleration. But since the wheel force is also a lot higher, we come out with a 6.59 G of peak theoretical acceleration. But remember that there are various losses in the drivetrain. So if we use the same 85% metric, we see that peak theoretical acceleration drops down to 5.6 Gs, which is still 
absolutely ridiculous. I hope doing all that math gave you a good understanding of the launch and the actual magnitude of the launch with some real concrete figures. Keep in mind this is a basic model and it's not taking into account a few things, but the two main things it's not taking into account are clutch slip, which is really important for the dragster, and it's also not taking into account folding of those huge tires. I mentioned how big the tires were earlier. They're 36 inches in diameter with a 16 inch rim. So that sidewall is really thick and they only inflate these things to about six and a half PSI, which is hardly anything. For reference, a performance street tire is inflated from anywhere between 30 to 40 PSI. So because the sidewall of the tire is so big, the inflation pressure is so low, it's really squishy. Plus, there's huge forces that are acting on the tire in general. We get what I call tire folding, which is when the radius of the tire shrinks up to six inches at launch. The tire goes from roughly 0.46 meters in radius to 0.39 meters in radius, and that has huge implications on wheel force. If you remember from earlier, we can calculate wheel force from wheel torque and tire radius. So if you take our static tire dimensions and 32,000 Newton meters of wheel torque, you can see that wheel force is almost 69,000 newtons, just like we calculated earlier. But if you take our folded tire dimension at 0.39 meters of radius, we get a wheel force of 82,000 newtons. What I'm trying to show here is when that tire folds and that radius starts shrinking, the force that's being put to the ground dramatically increases and that results in more acceleration. If you haven't picked up on it already, I think the tires are the most interesting part of the dragster. Not only do they shrink and create more wheel force at launch, but as the car runs down the thousand foot run, centrifugal force on the tire increases and the actual tires start expanding, which increases the overall diameter of the tire. And so the tire growth portion of the race in the second half is really important because it actually creates a really cool dynamic gearing effect. So if we were to calculate the top speed of the dragster, we know it has roughly a 9,000 RPM redline and the final drive ratio is 3.2. So we're gonna see about 2,800 tire rotations per minute at that redline. An easy way to think about it is that 3.2 final drive ratio just means that the engine should rotate 3.2 times for every one time the tire rotates. So if we were to calculate the top speed with that 36 inch diameter, which is the diameter of the tire when it's just sitting around, we would start with the tire rotation, 2800 RPMs, multiplied by 60 minutes in an hour because we're going to convert this into miles per hour instead of per minute multiplied by the circumference of the tire which is 115 inches divided by the number of inches in a mile so 63,360 inches we see that the theoretical top speed at that 9,000 rpm redline is only 306 miles an hour but we know dragsters can go faster than this because the world record dragster run is clocked at over 330 miles an hour. If we do the same calculation for the expanded tire, which we're gonna say is roughly 44 inches in diameter, you can see that the theoretical top speed jumps to almost 352 miles an hour. So that tire expansion is actually by design and helps the dragster achieve a much higher top speed. Now we're gonna switch gears and look at the engine. It's a 500 cubic inch V8 for us Americans or an 8.2 liter V8. It has a supercharger which runs at over 70 PSI of pressure, which is crazy. And this motor uses almost a thousand horsepower just to run the supercharger. Total output of the motor has never been measured on a dyno as far as I know, but it's estimated at over 10,000 horsepower and torque is coming in at around 7,000 foot-pounds. The output numbers are obviously massive, but the engine gets really interesting when you start looking at the fuel it burns. It burns a 90% nitromethane, 10% methanol mix, and it burns over one gallon of fuel per second. Let's take a closer look at the fuel because there's some crazy stuff going on here. If you care about chemical formulas, nitromethane is CH3NO2. It's a monopropellant fuel, which means it has low oxygen requirements for combustion, and that makes it really appealing for these high-powered cars. Let's do a comparison between nitromethane and gasoline. So starting with specific energy, which is basically how much energy you can store per unit mass, gasoline is 12.889 kilowatt hours per kilogram, 
and nitromethane is only 3.138 kilowatt hours per kilogram. So this means that gasoline stores about 4.1 times as much energy per unit of weight. So why are they using fuel that has four times less energy per unit weight? The answer lies when you actually combust the fuel. So when the fuel's resting, yes, gasoline is four times more energy dense, but when you actually combust the fuel, it gets really interesting. So to combust one kilogram of gasoline, you need 14.7 kilograms of air. You may have heard of an air to fuel ratio. This is exactly what that is. You have one part of gasoline per 14.7 parts of air. Nitromethane on the other hand, only needs 1.7 kilograms of air per one kilogram of fuel for combustion. So if you burn one kilogram of gasoline, you produce almost 13 kilowatt hours of energy and it takes 15.7 kilograms total. If you burn one kilogram of nitromethane, it produces about three kilowatt hours of energy, but it only takes 2.7 kilograms total mass. So if you take the specific energy of combustion itself with the fuel and the air, gasoline comes out to 0.821 kilowatt hours per kilogram, and nitromethane comes out to 1.16 kilowatt hours per kilogram. So more simply put, nitromethane is actually more energy dense when you're talking in terms of combustion. And nitromethane becomes even more appealing when you look at the density of these liquids. Gasoline has a density of about 0.75 kilograms per liter, and nitromethane is much more dense at about 1.14 kilograms per liter. So we've been looking at specific energy, which is energy per unit mass, but if you convert that to energy per unit liter, we see that gasoline combustion comes out to 0.615 kilowatt hours per liter and nitromethane combustion comes out to 1.319 kilowatt hours per liter, which is 2.2 times more energy from the same combustion volume. So now you know all the energy figures of the fuel itself, but let's see what that means in terms of a full thousand foot run. So the dragster is consuming over one gallon of fuel per second, which is about four liters. And with that figure, we can calculate the peak theoretical power this fuel produces. So we multiply 5.276 kilowatt hours times 3,600 seconds, which is how many seconds are in an hour, and you get almost 19,000 kilowatts of power or 25,000 horsepower. In simple terms, this means that if the engine converted 100% of that fuel energy to motion, this car would have 25,000 horsepower, but since the motor is only about 40% efficient, the car has a measly 10,000 horsepower instead. And you might be wondering by now, why am I using kilowatt hours as our unit of energy? And I thought it would be an interesting comparison to look at EVs to give you an idea of the power and energy we're talking about. If you look at the Model S Plaid, which is an incredibly high performance EV from Tesla, it has a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack and roughly an 800 kilowatt peak power draw. So the power requirements of this top field dragster are 24 times what they are for a Tesla Model S Plaid, which holds the record for a quarter mile for a streetcar. And going a step further, if you did a full run in a dragster and were pulling energy from a battery pack, again, this is all theoretical, you would drain 21 kilowatt hours of battery pack in just four seconds. So what that means is you would drain the entire 100 kilowatt hour Tesla Model S battery pack in 18 seconds of full power. If you're still watching at this point, stay tuned because I'm gonna show you some visuals of a top field dragster against some really fast street cars and it'll show you just how fast this thing is. But let's look at aerodynamics real quick. It's clear that the dragster has a really odd shape. It has a massive rear wing, which produces 5,200 pounds of downforce at 300 miles an hour. And it actually has a little wing on the front, which keeps those tires on the ground and keeps that front end from coming up. And that creates 700 pounds of downforce at 300 miles an hour. So we have over 6,000 pounds of downforce coming from those two wings, but there's also downforce coming from the engine itself. So if you look at a dragster, you can see the headers are pointed upward and there's so much mass that's being pushed out of those headers that it creates over 800 pounds of downforce just from the exhaust gases. And at the end of the run, when it's doing about 330 miles an hour, the dragster is experiencing over 10,000 pounds of forces pushing down on it. 
let's switch gears and look at the drag race simulator. We're going to give a great visual of how fast the dragster is compared to some of the world's fastest streetcars. So here we are on the drag race simulator. I set up an eighth mile race, so half the distance of a quarter mile between a top field dragster and a Bugatti Chiron. This is obviously going to be on a prepped drag surface and you're going to see just how ridiculous the gap looks. So right off the bat, it, it doesn't even look real. It looks like the dragster came out of a slingshot and the Bugatti still gets a zero to 60 time in two seconds flat, but the dragster gets a zero to 60 time of 0.4 seconds with one foot rollout subtracted, a zero to 100 time in 0.8 seconds, 60 to 130 in 0.6 seconds, 100 to 150 in 0.4 seconds, and it goes zero to 248 miles an hour in only two and a half seconds. We're gonna do the same race, but this time I added a Honda Civic on the bottom. And you can see the gap between the Civic and the Chiron is less than the gap between the Chiron and the Dragster. So I'm just trying to show you how ridiculous this thing is because you can't really even compare it to a streetcar because the acceleration is leaps and bounds ahead of anything out there. I'm going to briefly summarize the big points from this video. It's obvious top field dragsters have crazy performance and acceleration. The fastest run ever was 3.6 seconds at 330 miles an hour. And remember, that's a thousand feet, not the full quarter mile, which is 1,320 feet. It's no question that there's insane maintenance requirements for these cars. They need an engine rebuild every one or two runs. They can use a set of tires for only five or six runs. And the fuel requirements are insane. The tires are very special and they create a really cool dynamic gearing effect. And there's a ton of other really cool aspects of dragsters that I didn't even touch on, like the clutch system, which is really cool. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something from this. If you want to check out the Top Field Dragster on motormatchup.com and race it against any car, I'll put a link in a pinned comment below. Otherwise, make sure you like and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.